Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a time when it seems that anything could happen suddenly, just out of nowhere. Think about the weather, current events. These things keep coming at us by surprise. We know that things like this will come, we just don't know exactly when. And that's the problem. So it always hits us by surprise. I couldn't tell you what the next surprise is going to be, but uh, it's coming soon. Count on it. Today, we are going to discuss one of the more mysterious structures of the ancient world, the ziggurat. Many of the videos I have done previously relates to this understanding. Think about the story of the Tower of Babel because we are talking about a Babylonian tower or structure when it comes to the architecture. Why is it that of the ziggurats that have been uncovered, why is it that they are missing their tops? Most of them are just in ruins, almost as if something was done to them intentionally. I'm not saying they have to be completely intact, it just seems weird that most if not all of them have only the bottom portions remaining. So let's dive into this, and let's take a closer look at what we need to know about our historic world, these ancient structures, the technology used, and their destruction. In 2016, something happened. Something that I think most of you never heard of, or you never received the news. Apparently for a very long time, many ancient structures in Iraq have been looted dry and severely damaged. Well, back in late 2016, it was confirmed that ISIS had destroyed a nearly 3,000-year-old ziggurat. And not just any ziggurat the Nimrud ziggurat in the Assyrian city of Nimrud. I mean, they completely leveled it. Even the Smithsonian Magazine published an article on it back in November of 2016. ISIS has destroyed a nearly 3,000-year-old Assyrian ziggurat. The ziggurat of Nimrud was the ancient city's central temple. In addition to the many human atrocities committed by ISIS, one of its regular calling cards has been the destruction of irreplicable archaeological sites. Now, even as Iraqi forces work to drive the insurgent group from its strongholds, satellite images show it has left behind a trail of destroyed heritage sites, including a 2,900-year-old ziggurat in the ancient Assyrian city of Nimrud in northern Iraq. Now it's not uncommon for ancient structures to get caught in the crossfire of fighting forces. However, it does seem somewhat of a convenient excuse or reason, right? Iraqi forces announced that they have recaptured Nimrud on Sunday. Dominic Evans and Ahmed Rashid report for Reuters. While experts are still waiting for permission to examine the damage inflicted on the ancient city, Recent satellite images indicate that the ziggurat is no more. ISIS has made a habit out of publicly destroying and vandalizing ancient historical sites throughout its reign in the region anomaly as an attack on traditions and culture that do not fit into its religious beliefs. However, as Benjamin Sutton reports for Hyperallergic, experts are unsure exactly why the group destroyed the ziggurat. The Ziggurat Mound is the highest point in the nearby landscape, making it an ideal defensive position for encroaching forces. However, the archaeological site is located in a remote area far from strategic points. The American Schools for Oriental Research's Cultural Heritage Initiatives say in a statement, Alternatively, 
like the Northwest Palace and the Nabu Temple at Nimrud, the attack could have served a dual purpose, intentional destruction for the composition of future propaganda and retributory violence to demoralize local populations and goad invading military forces. ISIL militants could also have been searching for antiquities in the mound. So you mean to tell me that these militant forces of Iraq were ignorant when it came to ziggurats? So they actually thought there may be hidden treasures inside, still, in Iraq? And on top of that, listen to this. If the militants were looking for treasures to loot, they would have been sorely disappointed by the ziggurat of Nimrud, unlike the Great Pyramids, which contained internal chambers and passageways, Ziggurats were solid mounds made from mud brick, with nothing on the inside but more brick. Richard Spencer reports for the Times. So let's take a closer look at the ziggurat itself. The ziggurat is a tower structure, similar to a step pyramid, with receding levels, but with terraces. The base is square or rectangular. The interior is made up of sun-baked mud bricks with fire bricks on the outside. Each level or step is slightly smaller than the level beneath it and the facings on the bricks of each level were different colors. They say the different colors have an astrological significance. I see them as markings similar to the color coding they do at airports so that anyone arriving would know where to go. Are you with me so far? Keep in mind that doesn't mean that this is the case. I'm speculating here. The names of kings were sometimes engraved on the faces of the bricks, which is a common practice today in public places. You may see placards or pictures or monuments of important people who have made donations, contributions to the building or structure. And interestingly enough, we do the same exact thing with our own airports today. And given the structure's architecture that remains, I would have to agree to that. However, it doesn't dismiss the possibility of something significant being at the top. Something that would give away the building's true purpose and make it very obvious. Such as a traffic control tower. Let's not forget, folks. The story of these structures has been told and what happened to them, that story has been told. In the book of Anki, it reads, In the southern part of the desolate peninsula, a place of mountains, twin adjoining peaks in Lil selected, on them the southern dimlet he anchored. Where the second set of twin peaks was required, mountains there were none. Only a flat land above the water-clogged valley from the ground protruded. Artificial peaks therein we can raise. So did Nagishida to the leaders say. On a tablet the image of smooth-sided, skyward rising peaks for them he drew. If it can be done, let it so be, Enlil with approval said. Let them also as beacons serve. On the flat land, above the river's valley, Nagishida a scale model built. The rising angles and fourth smooth sides with it he perfected. Next to it a larger peak he placed. Its sides to Earth's four corners he set. I'll say that again. Its sides to Earth's four corners he set. By the Anunnaki, with their tools of power, where its stones cut and erected. Beside it, in a precise location, the peak that was its twin he placed. With galleries and chambers for pulsating crystals he designed it. When this artful peak to the heavens rose, to place upon it the capstone the leaders were invited. Of electrum, an admixture of gibbel fashion, was the apex stone made. The sunlight to the horizon it reflected. By night, like a pillar of fire, it was. The power of all the crystals to the heavens in a beam it focused. When the artful works by Nagishida designed, were completed and ready. All these types of structures are mentioned again when Ra or Marduk come into power after Gilgamesh's death. 
A war is launched over the division of kingdoms. Marduk hiding from Inanna, who is Enlil's granddaughter, entombed himself inside one of the pyramid's chambers. But the pyramid's designer Nagishida knows the architecture of the pyramids and reveals where Marduk may be hidden. And they find him, but his life is spared and he goes into exile. After which Enki and Enlil redivide the kingdoms among their other sons. Anu comes to visit Earth and pardons Marduk upon leaving. Regions are allocated to mankind and the first region, the first man-made civilization, would be Sumer. Marduk picks a site to build a launch tower. Marduk then takes over the second region, kicking Nangishida out and he renames himself and starts to call himself Ra. Let us not also forget what the Iraq transport minister had to say. Kazim Finjan? Perhaps? Let's not also forget what Kazim... Let us not also forget what Kazim Finjan said, the transport minister of Iraq. He said, perhaps many of the people of the Dakar governorate do not know that the first airport to be built on planet Earth 5,000 years ago, before the Christian era, was built here, in Dakar. If you do not believe me, read the book of the great historian Zechariah Sitchin, who was an expert on Sumerian studies. Read the books of Samuel Kramer, or the book written by H.G. Wells. About this, history begins from Sumer. He talked about the first airport built on the planet which was in this place. This is the safest place for airplanes to land and take off because some meteorological factors that limit an airplane's maneuvering ability do not exist in the Dakar airport. Not only above the airport, the skies all over Dakar are safe for planes because there are no negative meteorological influences here. The atmosphere throughout Dakar is positive. It was from here that the Sumerian spaceships took off towards the other planets. The Sumerians were the first to discover the 12th planet, which was acknowledged a few days ago by NASA and named Nibiru, and which completes its orbit around the sun every 3,600 years. So what we may have here are pyramids like the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the pyramids in Antarctica, which I believe are from the civilizations that existed before the Flood. The Egyptian pyramids, the ziggurats, the Mayan pyramids, I believe are structures of the world after the Flood. Now does this mean that the ziggurats are in ruins due to warfare? Or were they recently ruined to hide the truth from us? The corners of the ziggurat are designed to line up with the four compass points. And apparently, when they were in operation, there would always be someone stationed at the top of the ziggurat to keep watch. Just in case one of the gods showed up. They even had provisions prepared for them upon arrival. There are over 30 ziggurats that have been found and they are never solitary buildings. There are always other buildings around it to make up an entire complex, which could be very telling if we know what these other structures are. I did find something interesting in the Holman Bible Atlas that reads, The Babylonians built many temples to their gods and goddesses. Over 40 are known from Babylonian texts, but only a few have been excavated. A temple in Nemach, the goddess of the underworld, stood inside the Ishtar gate across from the palace. The temple of Ishtar of Agad and a shrine to Ninurta also have been recovered. The most important temple in Babylon was the temple of Marduk, known as Asagia, House of the Uplifted Head. Excavations have reached only portions of the temple, whose ruins lie buried deep within one of the mounds of the ancient city. A double wall surrounded the temple, marking off the sacred territory of the god, ancillary buildings for the priests and functionaries as well as smaller shrines to other deities were found within the enclosure. 
Nebuchadnezzar boasted that he covered the walls of Marduk's shrine with gold, inset with precious stones. Herodotus states that two golden statues of Marduk, one seated and another standing, were kept in this temple, though he did not see them. Undoubtedly, the most imposing structure in Babylon was the ziggurat known as Etamenanki, building of the foundation of heaven and earth. Ziggurats, or temple towers, were a feature of Mesopotamian cities as far back as the third millennium. The ziggurat stood within its own large sacred enclosure north of Asagila. Virtually nothing survives of the structure made of sun-dried and baked bricks, and scholars must depend primarily on ancient descriptions to reconstruct this famous landmark. The ziggurat consisted of a square base, 300 feet to each side, supporting a series of six levels, each level an increasingly smaller square. Each level may have been a different color. A temple to Marduk crowned the top of the ziggurat, with at least one flight of stairs giving access to the sanctuary. The total height was slightly less than 300 feet, and ciliary buildings around the ziggurat providing living quarters, similar to like hotels around airports, storage rooms, and administrative space necessary for the cult. Nothing survives of the famous Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the wonders of the ancient world. You know, when you see the same things over and over in these ancient texts and you hear the theories of scholars, archaeologists, scientists, antiquities experts, these structures become less and less mysterious. After everything that we already know, there should be no question about it. One day I'll have to take all these different texts and information from different cultures to come up with an origin story that is more complete, with references to names organized in a way so that you know who is who, no matter what the language. Until next time, folks, make sure you all visit Woodward Studios at woodwardentertainment.com as we continue to build and update the site for you. There's a lot more madness to come. Take care, folks. Stay awake. Stay aware. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.